Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. In this episode, we cover a topic that may be sensitive to some. This is not a business topic, but it affects our economy nonetheless. Today, we discuss the 10th leading cause of death in the United States and the world's second leading cause of death to those ages 15 to 24. This is an illness that has risen 33% from 1999 to 2017. The illness in question is suicide. We lose a fellow American every 11 minutes to this illness, roughly 49,000 individuals annually in America alone. And we are seeing our highest numbers in our Caucasian, American Indians, and Alaska Natives population. The greatest asset to any country is their people. And those people are far too valuable to lose too early. If you are having a suicidal crisis or emotional distress, please call the national hotline at one 800 273 8255. For those we have lost too soon, please join me in a moment of silence of remembrance. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Guest was born and raised in Hood River, Oregon, and graduated from the University of Oregon. After school, he moved to Portland and began a career in sales before starting Outlaw Auto Detail in 2018. Please welcome the owner of Outlaw Auto Detail, Desmond Boots. Desmond Boots, welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. What's going on, my man? Well, thanks for having me, buddy. Oh, man, thank you so much for being here. First, let's start out by introducing the world to my man, Desmond Boots. I would love to kind of just get a little background. just, just introduce the world. Who is Desmond Boots? Yeah. So I'm 38, turning 39 next week. Happy and, birthday. Uh, appreciate it, buddy. And uh, so I grew up in Hood River, Oregon. Um, went to high school there. Graduated in 2000 and um, took off to Eugene, Oregon. Spent a couple of years at Lane Community College and then a couple of years at uh, University of Oregon. Graduated from there, uh, 2005 and, uh, moved to, um, actually moved back home with my mom for like two months because I had no clue what I wanted to do. <laughs> Nobody does, right? Nobody well, does. you know, and, and I think that's the case. I really do believe that's the case. You know, I think it's tough, but I, I think more than anything, you know, in college, what it was, was more getting to know about myself. Definitely. Meeting people. So that's what I took out of that. Nice. But, um, so then I got on the good old Portland job <laughs> Nice. And, and I landed a job uh, it was a co- with a company based out of Beaverton and as a sales position. Again, had no clue what I wanted to do, but I needed to do something. So moved in with a friend in Lake Oswego around that time and, and started that job. And to this day, I actually still work as a sales rep in that same industry. Wow. So how many years has that been? We're looking at almost 16 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about outlaw details. First, tell me what, what is it? What do you guys do? Yeah. So outlaw auto detailing is exactly kind of what it sounds like. We, we detail, um, vehicles, um, interior details, exterior details, you know, washing, waxing, the whole works. But, but, um, basically where everything started was about two, two and a half, three years ago, 2018. Um, I had just finishing, just finished coaching softball. So I coach softball where I live now. And so it was springtime softball just got over and, uh, needed, I, I felt like I just needed something else to do, right. To fill that time after my day job. 
And detailing cars had always been a passion of mine. Cars in general has always been a passion of mine. So st- decided to just hit up a few of the, the friends, close friends and family in the area to see if, you know, they would like me to detail their vehicles. And that's where, that's pretty much where it all started. And then, um, from there started doing things in the garage, working from the garage at home. I used the first like four vehicles that I detailed to, to basically, I did it for free. And then I used that as pure marketing material, right? So it was free monetarily, but right. they gave me five-star reviews, pictures, and then those four first four vehicles is sort of what lifted the company off. The, Interesting. Off the yeah. So, so you essentially kind of, that was kind of like your, uh, your, your test in the water, right? Let's see if this business proposition is going to work. A hundred percent. You know, I, I think I've been doing the sales gig for so long that I felt like the sales gig is a good thing to do, uh, to support my family. Right. And, and, and that's always going to be obviously number one, but I, I, I was missing something in life and, and it was something that I was missing that, that had to deal with. You know, we talk about these things that we're passionate about doing. And, and I, I truly believe that's, that's a very important path to go down for anybody. And, and it might, we, we're going to figure it all out at, at different times, I think, in life. I mean, I was, what, 30, 37 when I actually decided to move forward with it. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's when it started. And, and, um, and it was based off of that sort of, I just need to do something to make me happy. Yeah. Did you, did you stick with the initial idea of, of car detailing or did you, is this your first kind of time in, in the small business and being an entrepreneur? No, actually. So I, I got into the real estate game. Okay. I got my real estate license. And I, I tinkered around for that for about six months and found that I was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, it just did not work. So it's, it's, so let's talk about that a little bit. How do you feel being a, a realtor was different than being, cause you're, you're been doing sales for 16 years and you're very successful at that. How was that different? Sure. So stepping back. So my sales position is, is nothing face to face. Right. So the job that I have is all email. It's, it's, re, it's basically, you can do it remotely. So it's all email phone calls, zero face to face now. And it's all, it's all business to business too. So that's, a, that's a huge change. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. And so when I got into real estate, um, I found that the process was quite a bit different than what I was used to. And it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't in my lane. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily what I could really even adapt to. I tried making changes along the way to try and fit down that process. And, and I found that I just couldn't. Yeah. So, so what kind of prompted, you know, outlaw auto detail to become a business? Did you kind of already have an itch to become a small business owner? Uh, Other than, you know, you said, you mentioned you, you um, have a passion for detailing cars and cars itself, but did you kind of have that itch to be an entrepreneur after that real estate gig. So here's the cool thing about that is that as difficult as it was for me to do real estate, doing and starting the detailing business, I wouldn't say was difficult. And I, and I think that's a good indicator that you might be onto something with your passion. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and so, yeah, it was completely different in, in um, starting outlaw auto detailing. It didn't seem like work to me. I remember getting up, you know, I was doing it on the weekends to start and I remember getting up and, and being excited. I remember being excited the night before about the car that had to detail the next morning and waking up and being excited to start doing it. And and I would do it all day long. Didn't even realize really that the time was going by. Wow. Now, did you originally start with the idea of detailing cars or did you also look at other ideas after real estate? Um, so going back to the coaching thing, I, At the time that I started uh, the detailing business, I was assistant coach at the at Sisters High School for softball, and then I ended up becoming I applied for ended up becoming the head coach at Sisters High School. So that that was a path that I wanted to go down. Um, I had coached 
some younger teams before then. And I really wanted to go down the coaching path and I, and I really enjoyed it. And again, another passion of mine, unfortunately, you know, coaching at the lower levels like that, you know, the, the, the financial support isn't there And that. That was a huge play on and a huge factor determining what I wanted to do next and what, and where I needed to go. Makes sense. Now with outlaw, um, or, you know, outlaw auto detail, is there like a point in time when you're like, you know what, I made the right decision. You know, you, you got those first four under your belt, right? Was there a point when you're like, you know what, this is, this is successful. This is going to be profitable. I think, I think it was honestly, I think it was right towards the beginning. I I think that, I think that the the feedback that, that I received after even the first few cars that I detailed, I think that was when I was like, this is it, right? Because one, it didn't feel like work to me. And then two, people were happy with the work and and it was something that, that I wanted to wake up and do. So, so I think that, that was when I was like, okay, this, this lane right here is where I want, how I want to be, where I need to be. And, and, and this is what's going to provide happiness. Now here, here's a funny thing is that the main job that I do, the main sales job that I ha- still have to this day, the corporate job, it, it allows me the possibility and it allows me to do the detailing gig. It's funded a lot of getting the detailing business off the ground. But in turn, the detailing gig allows me to be a better and happier person in general, which allows me to then do better at my main job and my sales job. So you still work your full time position and own this auto body detailing. We're doing it all, man, man. So was there ever a moment, you know, when you're starting this detailing shop of of doubt or self doubt and use an entrepreneur or, or doubt in the actual company? Absolutely. And, and this is, this is not something that I've really spoken about publicly uh, aside from, from talking with my wife. Right. So I started this business with a young man. Uh, he was, he was 20 years old when we started this company. And, and one of the, actually the reasons what, what actually sort of pushed me to, to kind of get the ball rolling with the business is that he, he had graduated high school. He had moved away to Eugene he had come back to sisters and he was my neighbor and he had mentioned wanting to start a detailing business. And we had been talking about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this young man, 20 year old young man under my wing and, and, and I'm going to start the business. I'm going to, I'm going to finance everything. I'm going to get everything going on my end. And then if he shows up and he wants to work, then I'm going to know that, that he, that he's into this too, that, that the idea that he kind of threw around is something that he's serious about. And then I'm going to take that and we're going to, we're going to go together on this journey. So it was about a year, just over a year ago, a year and three months. So November of 2019, um, I was vacationing in, in Las Vegas with the family And I get a phone call that my business partner, this young man, uh, wasn't answering anybody's phone calls. And so I had texted him, Hey, you know, you're probably out having a good time somewhere, but if you could reach back to me or your parents or, or anybody, that'd be great. Just let us know that you're all right. Well, turns out that, um, he had driven to the top of a, of a mountain and he shot himself and, uh, you know, he was 21 years old at the time. So going back to your question of self-doubt, I mean, not just business self-doubt, but I can tell you right now, Gabe, that it was a whole, uh, self-doubt when you, when you're mentoring somebody, you know, you're coaching somebody, not just in business, but there was a lot of things that I was coaching him in life in general. I had to really, really face some, some reality there, you know, and, and not to make this about you know, me, but it did affect me in, in the sense that, okay, one, do I want to keep going? And two, how can I ever keep going with anybody else? When what I thought was a great thing, obviously 
might not have been the best thing for this person. Now, with suicide, we never fully know why, right? And and that's that's what sort of allows me to, I think the decision was to keep going on, but it was because I don't fully believe that it was anything necessarily to do with his life in the, in the detailing business. But the, the question's always, always there. So, um, yeah, definitely. I questioned myself and it was two months later, Gabe, after that happened that I actually resigned from my coaching position as head coach at, at the high school. And again, I haven't told anybody about this really. I haven't, you know, I haven't gone public except for, except for my wife. Um, I really, really questioned Am I the guy to be mentoring younger, young adults? Right. It, 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 until you're in that situation and, and my wife is great, you know, she definitely, she definitely knows the right things to say, but it's one of those situations where it's like, until you're in that situation, the feeling of, of that on your shoulders, can it happen again? Will it happen again? What am I doing? Am I doing something that, is my ways doing something that is, is not, is just not working. Um, a lot of, a lot of doubt there, Gabe, a lot of doubt. Did, it sounds like your wife was a big player. Did, is that the reason or, or one of the core reasons that you're able to overcome this? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Cause she's the only one that I actually have gone to about it, you know? And yeah, she, she, um, she has a level head and she under, I think she fully understands things. Uh, she sees it differently than me and, and probably truer than me um, without the feelings involved. So she can see it and she can say what she sees to me. And, and so, yeah, definitely. How has this moment changed you as a entrepreneur, but more importantly, how has it changed your business? Well, the, ultimately, the decision to, to just keep going as an entrepreneur, um, you, you got to go. You're going to stop or you're going to go, right? You can't go halfway. And my passion for, for being an entrepreneur, my passion for running and owning this business um, it is what ultimately, yeah, it's, it's, it's go and it's go and it's go time. And um, so what happened after that was um, I ended up hiring uh, I ended up hiring his, his younger brother is now my shop manager. So what I, what I've done is I've stepped away from doing the actual detailing work. And, and I want this business to now I've shifted and pivoted the business a little bit to where I'm, I'm running the show, but I'm training others. And I have three, three employees now, one shop manager who is his younger brother, like I said, and then two other employees that are doing all of the work. And, um, and that's, that's a better situation for me now because it was a little bit difficult to get back in there and do the work myself and just, you know, try and get through the day doing it, all the things that we had done together. Um, yeah, so, so that's kind of where we're at now. You know, going through this process of starting this business, what is one thing you wish you would have known before you, you went down this, you know, rabbit hole of entrepreneurship? I think, I think being prepared to, um, I think being prepared to essentially delegate tasks is a huge thing for someone starting out as a business owner. You want to do everything yourself and you want, you, you, you can't fathom anybody doing your role, Right. So I, I wish, and, and that's kind of to go along with what I just said. Now I'm hiring people. Now I have people doing more tasks. Now I'm actually training people to do a lot of the stuff that I do. Now I feel that I feel now that am I stepping away too far? So you kind of caught me still early on in this, in this venture of this business. Yeah. And so now I'm like, am I going away too far? Am I stepping aside too much? But the fact of the matter is, is I think at some point all business owners have to have to delegate and have to let other people in. And here's the thing is that no one's ever going to 
do as good of a job as you or be as passionate about your business as you. But it's, it's trying to find that, that trying to bring that gap in a little bit to where uh, it's not them doing nothing at all, but it's not them doing as much as you would, but trying to, to, to bring it in to where they're at least everything's still able to run and able to run good. Yeah. What, what is something you may have learned throughout this process that actually surprised you about being, you know, an entrepreneur, a small business owner? So that something that surprised me, um, I didn't think from the beginning, I didn't think that, that the happiness level that, that you can receive in life could actually be that high. Right. Like I, I didn't, I didn't, I just thought that maybe you would kind of go through the motions and it would be a cool thing to do. But I didn't really think that when you're doing it and you're super passionate about it, that you can actually live a life that, that has fulfillment in it. That that's, that's probably the biggest thing that I've noticed, right? Like I don't, it's tough, but like, I, I don't, I'm at my shop seven days a week normally. And, and, and it's not even like it's work. I, I just, I just enjoy being there, you know? What, what advice would you give a younger Desmond Boots? Oh boy. This, this, que- this question is interesting to me. And, and the reason why this question is interesting is because I feel like everything leading up to now has, it's had its purpose. And, and I'm not trying to dodge that question at all, <laughs> but, but I honestly believe that. Like, I feel like if I did one thing different leading up to now, am I here? Yeah. I feel like if, if, if I was a different person in my 20s, do I find my wife and do I move to Central Oregon and do I even start the business? I, I've thought about this f- far before you've asked this question. And I, and I think a lot of it is, I think a lot of it is the younger Desmond Boots, you know, though there were faults, I feel like has created the current Desmond boots. And, and I, I don't know. I'm, and, and I don't want to sound like, Oh, he thinks he's a perfect guy. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say that like, I feel like things fall in line and in place and a lot of luck comes in into play. And that's where that's, that's potentially what has me where I'm at now. The sweet isn't as sweet without the bitter, right? Oh, hey, right. Hey I'm now. telling you last question. Would you do it all again? Would I do what? All of this, being an entrepreneurship, doing everything that you've just done. Would you do it all again? Yeah, I do. It, I would do it again. I would do it again. And in fact, I, I would, you know, if there's other passions that, that I, that I, that come about as I age, I, I'll probably will dive into something else and do it. All right, Desmond, tell the people at home, how can they get a hold of you? How can they get a hold of uh, auto outlaw detail? So you can find us on Instagram at Outlaw Auto Detailing. Um, or you can find us on the World Wide Web. Uh, it's www.outlawdetailing.com. And where are you located? Central Oregon in Sisters. Hours of operations? 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Nice. Desmond, thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com. 